I think cobalt blue is rock solid for skies. I mean, I did try, I did try ultramarine, I did try deep ultramarine. I tried all of that. And I ended up with cobalt blue. It's grainy and it has a lot of life to it. It has a lot of life to it. It doesn't give up that easy. It doesn't give up that easy. So you get some, just mix it in here. You have a nice day and uh, not going to be very even because this is kind of a small space, but, but whatever. I mean, we're at the bottom of the sky. The top of the sky is always darkest. The bottom of the sky is always least darkest. So, you know, just sort of get in here and just get some in there. If it's not exact, if it's not perfect, that's okay for me. That's okay for me because I'm not too picky with, with, I am picky, but I'm not too picky with all of that. So anyway, and then on the sides, I mean, then you're just going to go ham over here on the sides. You know, you're just going to have a, a really good day over here. So we do have like this purple mountain at the bottom. But if we get into the purple, that's okay because it's blue. It's blue and a little purple, a little blue in the purple make, makes it all right. It makes it all right. I think it's tight. You know, that rhymes. It, it makes it all right. I think we're all right with that. So there we go. A little bit of that cobalt, a little bit of the cobalt blue. Obviously, if you're picky and you want it super even, you're going to be smoothing it going over here, but this is a, a loose watercolor sky, so I'm pretty good with it. Pretty good with it like that. So there we go. So when we got the sky in there, we're going to put the, the uh, flames in Photoshop, and I'll show you how to do all that. Now we're going over here to the lady. Lady! And we're going to put some sky in here. So some sky over there, and then over on the left side, put a little more sky. Around the tree with the snake, we're gonna get some more sky over there. So, you know, cobalt blue looks nice. I think it's nice. It's, it's very grainy. It's very, very grainy, which is okay, which is okay. But you have to sort of get used to it being that grainy. If you don't mind the grain, then I think you're going to be on the train. All right, so that's dark green up there, a little blue in the dark green, never hurt anybody. So I think we're good on that, and we're good on these skies. Again, we're just sort of coming in and making it dark, because when it dries, it's going to lighten up. So a little more here and there doesn't, won't hurt anybody. All right, so I think that looks all right. It's nice and grainy, and again, at the top, I want it to be a little darker. So let's come in here and smooge a little more of this in there and get a little darker at the top. There we go, a little more, a little more pigment in there at the top. I think we'll be good. There we go, there we go. Get a little of that darkness in there. Get that nice, loose watercolor look. We're gonna have the flames in there. It's going to be all right. Okay. I mean, that's it's a bit unacceptable right there. We'll blend that a little. There we go. All right. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little more darkness up here. All right. All right. I think we're good. If you haven't seen my other videos, I use ink tints. So this is basically a very, very intensive watercolor. It's only $2 a pencil. How magical is that? So it does leave pencil marks. You can see those, but that's okay. So we need to do a tree. I see a tree and it's got fire coming out of it. So we can get away with a pretty warm brown here. What brown do we want to use? I mean, it needs to be dark, but it can also be warm. I'm leaning towards 1910. That's a very warm, Maybe a little uh, 1910, maybe mix in a little 1730. So a little bit of a combo there, because that's warm. It's fire coming out of the stupid tree. I want to darken it up, but I still want it to be warm because there's fire coming out of it. So let's do that with a 1900. So 
So we're just going to get it here and put some of this. And again, the tips are going to be made out of fire and Photoshop. So it really doesn't sort of matter here. All right, we'll put some of this in there and then we'll get a brush and wet it down. And I do have, you don't need this, but this is a water brush. I think it's kind of cool. You get water in it and water comes out the bottom. So you just do this and water comes out. It's not very convenient for vertical because you gotta sort of hold it weird, but whatever. All right, so there's your warmth. There's the warmth for the tree. I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. We got a warm tree there. Now we need to mix in a darker color because that's, I mean, it needs to be a little darker. That's kind of embarrassing there. Not like you're gonna stare at the tree or anything, but it does need to be a little bit darker, come on. So let's get that other color and mix it in after this dries. Do not use these pencils on a wet surface. It will make the horrible looking pencil mark and it's almost impossible to get off. Okay, so I came in with three coats of my 1900 pencil. My 1900, I came in with three coats and I did the trees. And by the way, that is 1900. So it doesn't look dark, but with three coats, it looks nice. So that gives me a nice tree effect there. And I think it looks very dynamic against the background. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. So let's move on to something else. You know, the next thing I want to do is the mountain. So we're going to do the mountain. Uh, the atmospheric perspective gives us purple, a faded purple. You don't want bright. You want a faded purple. That's really dark, man. Come on. Atmospheric perspective says that everything is going to be a bit hazy and a bit purpley and not very bright and sort of muted. We need a muted purple. Um, man, that looks nice, but that's really dark. What about that? What do you think? Like 740, that is a very muted purple. And that could be a nice mountain in the background. And we can mix in, no, don't mix in that. That looks like crap compared with that. That's not a good combo. Let's do this. Let's do a light coat and then a darker coat for the mountain highlights. So 740 is gonna be our friend. 740 is called Mouave. Mouave. Okay, now this is gonna be a light touch, my friends. This is gonna be a light, light touch. Atmospheric perspective says it's purpley and it's light and it's light. You don't want dark. The picture is all dark. You don't want dark. We're lightly coming in here with Mouave. And we'll put in other colors later, but get around her footsie there. So we put in this mauve, really light, 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 light. That's nice. That's real nice. Get that light touch. Get the mauve in there. Probably have to put in like a couple layers there. Get us a brush. And uh, we stopped using that water brush because it sucked. So. I like this because it gives me a level of control over how much water comes in there. Uh, that's nice. That's nice. We want to get downward strokes because we want to make it, you know, like a mountain. A mountain does not go sideways. It goes down. So we get some downward strokes here. There we go. That looks nice. Looks like a, a volcano or something, but sure, why not? Sure, why not? Here we go, it looks pretty good. So we'll do all this purple and come back. Okay, showing you what I'm doing here. I picked up a dusky purple, which is 730. 730 dusky purple, and I've got a brush, and it's sort of damp. I dried it 90% off. I'm just coming in here and sort of just dotting it. Just dotting this, so I got that 730. Just want to uh, dot it. I don't want to make it a smooth thing. This brush is like 90% dry. So I'm just coming in here and just dotting this like that. So just for my imagination, I think this looks like a better mountain than if I just, you know, went and did one color like it's on the picture. 
So this gives it a better thing. So again, this is 7.30, this is dusk. We have a little dark right there. Now I told you not to touch uh, these pencils to the paper when it's wet, but I'm doing that right now because I want that effect. Of that really sort of weird, you know, pickup to where it has some stuff in it. You can see, look at how bad that looks. But I'm lightly rubbing it in like right here. Like that. And it gives me a weird look. But I sort of like it. Now, do we want to wet that or not? That looks good just by itself. That area here looks like shit, so we're just gonna wet that and fix that. Do I want to wet these other areas that I just did? I don't know, I don't think so. Just the raw pencil on it looks nice, man. That looks nice. Then we come down here, could use a little more Right down at the bottom, that's gonna have to be wet because holy crap, that looks terrible. Told you, I told you not to use the pencil on the wet paper. But what did you do, Terra Oracle? You used the wet pencil, uh, use the pencil on the wet paper. Overall, that's a nice looking mountain, boys. I mean, that's a nice looking mountain. So again, we just did a couple of colors. So if we look at that mountain compared to the reference, I mean, come on, who would you choose for a beauty pageant here? Who would you choose? You're gonna go with mine. That's pretty, that's pretty. All right. Okay, so I got the trees done. Now remember, we're gonna Photoshop fire on here. I'll show you how to do that. We need to do a snake and we need to do them. But that looks pretty good. So now we need to do the grass. So the grass on the Rider Waite Smith pixie card is all one color. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do all that garbage. The grass at the far end is going to be light. All right, basic atmospheric perspective. The grass is going to be light and dull. And when it gets closer, it's going to be brighter. When it gets closer, it's going to be even brighter. When it gets closer, it's going to be darker and super bright. So what does that mean for us? We need a dull, distant grass. I usually tend to do 1400. That's my default. You could do 1530. I think we should mix them. 1400, 1530. It's a dull, distant grass. 1400, it's not a dull, distant grass. So let's grab 1400 and 1530. All right, so that's, we're putting other pencils back. 1400. And 1530 is on the menu, is on the menu for today. So 14, 1530 and 1400. I swear I'm not like huge fat, but this chair just squeaks. All right, so here's our pretty green grass and here's our dull distant grass. So you can mix them. So you get the pretty green grass Sort of come a little bit close, you know, just a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And then the dull distance, we'll put that for the farther. Make sure and get it real light, you know, don't like mash it in, really light there. And get a little splotches of the dull distant, dull distant over there. There we go. And then we get the closer, brighter green grass, and we'll put it in between. There like that. There we go. So now we got a mix. You don't want it like all one color. Come on, man. Cut. There you go. Look at that. That looks beautiful. Well, actually, it doesn't look like anything. Now we get a brush and come in over there. Get that dull, that dull, distant, that bright green. Got some of that action there, that bright green. Get some of that there. Get that dull, distant mixed in with it. So it's all sort of splooged together. Wash your brush out between, because you don't want to mix those. It's going to look about the same anyway, but we're going to go back in and sort of change it a bit. That is looking kind of samey, but I mean, that's okay. This is our first layer. I mean, it's not like we're just going to give up and just 
give up at this point. We're not going to do that. We got to keep going. We got to keep going. So there we go. We got a little dull distant, a little, you know, a little of the bright, pretty. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Again, this is our first layer. So then we'll hair dry it and we'll come back in and then uh, put more detail on there. So you can kind of see I'm pressing harder with that bright green the closer we get. So we're getting close. We're coming in with a couple of layers of this bright green. And the bright green is sort of just appearing a little bit there, a little bit here, and we're getting a really prominent darker feel as we get closer. So pressing harder and getting that, getting the little smidges of green in there. When we hit it with a brush, now we got that magical, that magical bright, that very bright, very prominent kind of thing, you know, going here. So, and there we go. As we're coming through, we got more of that bright green, and uh, that's getting us where we want to go there with a the green. So, I like it. Obviously, they don't want a green footsie there. They don't make them a green footsie. But the brighter we get, the closer we get. So you can see that 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 it really brings it in. We're really bringing sort of a new level as we come in. Now we're gonna get super super dark up here. So what do we got that's super dark? You ask. Well, that is just gaudy and nasty. That's gaudy and nasty. That that that's pretty dark. That's pretty dark. Okay, 1510 is pretty dark. 1320 is, is so desaturated, I don't like it. You want it more, this is desaturated for the background. You want saturated, really saturated and pretty. 1520 is gonna do us good. It's gonna do us good. All right, we got more done. We got the tree, oh, I got the snake. So I came back in here, by the way, with the fan brush. If you got a fan brush, any kind of fan brush, you're gonna, let me show you sort of how we go about doing grass to where it make it look nice. So I went with a fan brush and I got a dark brown and I just sort of went like that. Did a little bit like that here too. And I did a little bit on the background here and then I lifted up and made grasses. So when you're doing this, you want to get a little bit of water on the fan brush, and then we want to dip into a green. So we're sort of cheating here and using a gouache green, but you get the general idea here. So we get the green. You want to come in, and you just want to make, you know, sort of dots, and then make little rounded, little rounded corners to make a little rounded effect there. And this is going to give you. A nice rounded grass, no pun intended. So you have that nice rounded look as we sort of come in here with a dot. And of course, you can come up, make the grasses like that. I like that. It's, it's a little bit too wet, so you're getting this weird effect. But if we dry it off, come back into the paint, make it not as wet, would be great. Now, we can come up and just make these grasses. But, I mean, you can't really make the grasses like that. You kind of have to have a base. So again, we just get this and make this. This is nice grassy effect there with that. And then you come on top of that after it's dry. You get fresh paint, pretty thick paint, and you want to make some grasses that come up like that. So give you a nice and grassy effect there. Not everywhere, but you know, some places. Then it's sort of coming back into the background. Make it a little bit shorter grass and whatnot. Sort of come in through here. You know, a bit lighter in the back there. We dip into the yellow too. So we could dip into the, uh, the yellow and get a yellowy effect. Clean the brush off for that. We dip into the yellow that we use for the sky, our normal yellow for the sky. We can dip into that and then put that in the back there. For that nice yellowy effect back there. Not everywhere, but a little yellow doesn't hurt anybody. 
Get a little yellow greenery back in the back there. Not everywhere. You don't want to just smooge it everywhere. You want it to be just a little bit. You know, a little subtlety is what it's all about. A little yellowness in the background. So it looks good. So if you back up, that looks like a field of grass. It looks pretty decent. So anyway, so there you go. That's how you make grass with a fan brush. And here's how it looks. Uh, backed out a little bit. So there you go. All right, overall, pretty happy with it. I like the grass. I like the mountain, put a little more detail on the mountain. So I got everything looking good from the ground up. It's looking pretty good. Now I need to do the clouds and then the robe. We're gonna spend some time with the robe and the wings. The wings are always fun. And we just got wings and robe, and that's literally it. I mean, that's that's everything. So just need to put some detail and the bodies and whatnot, but let's do that.